Um, picking off from the videos from yesterday, uh, we do have an update on on the Amazon walkouts, the Instacart strikes. Um, not not a whole lot on the on the Whole Foods strikes yet, but. Uh, as of yesterday, the organizer of the Amazon walkout has, has been fired by Amazon themselves. And if you look at it, yeah, this, this totally 100% makes sense as to how corporations operate um, when, when somebody challenges their, their power structure and their authority. Um, and, you know, essentially wants to try to keep us under their thumb. So Chris Smalls, uh, he's my age. He's 31, you know. Um, he was the organization of the walkout, and he got fired, and he got fired under the pretense uh, of a quarantine violation. They basically said he did not uh, quarantine himself when they said that he needed to be quarantined. Uh, so he, so they fired him is, is sort of what they said. It, that's, that's the claim that they're making. Now, uh, Chris Smalls, he makes the claim um, that when they found out that there was a employee within the Amazon warehouses that was um, uh, why am I losing the word? that was diagnosed with uh, with COVID nineteen, right? When they found out that this this, this Amazon employee was diagnosed with COVID nineteen, they told Chris to keep that shit under hush hush. That's 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 what Chris is saying. Chris was like, they, they did not tell me to go and isolate this guy. They basically said, we don't want to create any sort of a stir or a panic or any sort of thing. So just don't say anything about it. But who knows how much this person like went around like touching cardboard boxes, touching other people like like customers orders or interactions with other employees, you know, and, and now that's that's how that sort of spreads. Um, there, there's this story out of Korea of, um, an el uh, like an older woman, like mid, I think she was like maybe mid fifties or something. I can't particularly remember the detail of that, but this woman in South Korea, she was called patient 31. Patient 31 was a very, uh, extroverted individual that, uh, caught COVID-19 and she basically went and she went to church and she went to a community gathering and then she went to a little party and then she went to a, you know, a coffee shop or whatever. And she and so she had interactions with a lot of people. So her spread was was uh, was very large. Um, and, and if and if the you know, I don't know if this is the, the right way to deal with it or not. But right now we don't really have any plans other than to self quarantine and fuck ourselves over um, is. If that's the case, then you're not doing anything to prevent that as a company, right? Like we, we have a bunch of people that are like, stay away from each other, stay away from each other. We got to stay away from each other. And now you have a corporation that's like, stay, but, but money though. Now, this goes back and forth, right? Like people are going to go back and forth about this and they're going to say, well, you know, maybe this Chris guy is not telling the truth. You know, maybe he just he's just looking to get more money out of the situation. But who are you more likely to believe? Are you more likely to believe a multi-billion dollar company that has uh, repeatedly chosen profit over people with its dark age corporate policies or a worker trying to help his fellow human workers? I kind of feel like I'm going to go with the worker on this one. <laughs> I kind of feel like Chris Walls has less of a reason to weave a web of lies um, and gaslight you than Amazon does. Amazon 100% will gaslight you. I mean, there's a reason why Jeff Bezos owns fucking the Washington Post. It's because so he controls the narrative. Like, he gets to control whatever story he wants to come out there. So even the negative ones are like, they're like, to me, they're kind of brags. They're just like, yeah, I did that shit. What are you going to do about it? And I wrote about it in my own paper to tell all of you about what I did. So, Mm. lick my bald head like that's kind of the way that he <laughs> he operates under the Washington Post um, I'm more likely to believe Chris plain and simple I have no reason not to I have every reason not to trust what Amazon has to say what Jeff Bezos has to say what some fucking PR rep has to say I have every reason not to believe that So, moving to the Instacart strikes, 
Um, here's what the Instacart demands are. The Instacart demands are uh, they want a minimum 10% tip requirement and a uh, $5 increase for every order. Uh, I explained this yesterday is they kind of have a minimum, uh, like you get this much money minimum for this order. Like and it's not a lot. Um, I should look that up. Maybe maybe I can do that while I'm talking is, is, is the thing um, like how they explain pay through the Instacart Shopper app. Like I said, I, I used to do Instacart, so I can pull up the Shopper app if I still have it, I still have it. Uh, but basically, you know, they, they, have a, they have a minimum for, uh, for that, let me see, earnings. Ba -ba 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 -ba. How earnings are calculated. Okay, here's, here's what they say on the app itself. On the app itself, this is what they say. Right, uh, Instacart strives to pay the shopper, uh, shopper community fairly and competitively for the time and effort it takes to shop, bag, and deliver groceries. Our earnings approach focuses on these points. Customer tips aren't included as part of what Instacart pays you for a batch. As of February 19th, Instacart guarantees a minimum payment of $5 for each delivery batch uh, delivery only batch and seven to ten dollars for each full service batch your total earnings on a batch includes the instacart payment plus the customer tips so usually like the customer tips are like a dollar or two so out of that you're making nine to twelve bucks per delivery uh, so it includes the batch payment and then possibly peak boost uh, and then it also includes a delivery distance payment of 60 cents per mile. Uh, we calculate the most efficient route. So, okay, so essentially, like, you might get, um, I don't know, maybe, like, a $15 order. Maybe, right? Like, if the minimum is really $7, like, plus a $2 tip, that's 9 bucks, And then on top of that, you might get, so, so not even 15 bucks. You might get, you might get maybe to 11, right? 11 or 12 bucks plus five. That's $16 an hour. Yeah. If it takes about an hour to do all the shopping and all that stuff, you, you got, you got about $16 an hour. Um, that's semi decent. It should be double because hazard pay is usually double. Uh, so here's how Instacart responded to that as well, uh, because they did respond to it. They said that they will get the minimum tip. Uh, they'll provide sanitizer. They'll offer 14 days of pay to, uh, to the infected full-time and part-time employees. So you have to be infected for you to be able to get this pay, right? Um, and then they'll also implement sick pay and financial incentives. You know, apps like Instacart and DoorDash and uh, all these other, you know, apps, they always just gamify work. That's all they're doing, right? They have all these little apps and they try to gamify it. They're like, bonus round, bonus round. If you finish this order of 30 items in under 15 minutes, we'll give you an extra $3. Don't you want that $3, peasant? Go, go, go. Run around the grocery store. Find that, uh, find those items. Clock is running. Can he do it? Can he do it? Let's find out. It's really all they're doing is that, that they're gamifying it, right? And Instacart, uh, their their big thing is, and and really like all of these, um, all of these gig economy apps and stuff, uh, their big thing is is like, oh, it's flexibility. Like you have the flexibility of setting your own hours to come do this thing, right? And and it's kind of like Sophie's Choice. So you have flexibility in when you get to work and how much you get to work for less pay. Like it doesn't even match up hourly to what you would be making if you had a part-time or full-time job at like a grocery store or at an office or whatever, right? Or you can get the stability of pay and then crush your soul. Like you just get your soul pounded into the pavement every fucking day, right? So that's, that's what it is. And this is a, uh, let me see if I can pull this up. This is a statement from uh, Instacart. Uh, they said that the health and safety of our entire community, shoppers, customers, and employees is our first priority. 
Our goal is to offer a safe and flexible earnings opportunity to, to shoppers while proactively taking the appropriate precautionary measures to operate safely. We respect the right, uh, rights of shoppers to provide us feedback and voice their concerns. Now, again, I want to point out that yesterday I did, I did mention that um, I felt like, uh, you know, they... Uh, and this is this, this has been said by several other people. Like, there's an article that was written on Market Watch about this, um, as well. Is when you get an when you get an order, you have to do calculations in your head. And and I basically like the way they kind of make it sound is oh that delivery includes you going to the store, um, like the distance it takes you to go to the store, and then the distance it takes you to make that delivery. But that's not what they do. It's just a, the the distance between the grocery store and the customer's house, and that's it. That's what they that's what they will compensate you for even though driving to the store is also part of the job. Uh, so when you get a store that's nine miles away, you don't get that, you don't get the nine mile. Uh, you don't get points, to, uh, you don't get 60 cents on, on the dollar for every mile that you drive. You don't get that for that nine miles, right? So I complained to them and they were basically just like, okay, then just don't fucking deliver. We got other people that'll fucking do it. And now it's like, yeah, maybe not. Maybe that's something that you guys should fight for too. Maybe I'm, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm sore about that. But they made a claim, right? They made the claim that uh, it, we respect the rights of shoppers to pro provide feedback and voice their concerns. Well, I did, and they basically told me to go fuck myself. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, they like, they like, didn't give a shit. They just like didn't give a shit. Now, this strike has caused Amazon stocks to drop by 2%. Hilarious. Uh, a couple other things that have happened, too, is the New York Department of Labor told Postmates, which is like another kind of like a delivery app, right, um, to count their delivery people as employees, but there has been no comment from Postmates. Um, if they counted them as employees and they changed the rules in some way that negatively affected their people, their employees, right, because right now they're all independent contractors. That means that it would be a lot easier for them to get um, unemployment when they are laid off from these jobs, when they are unable to do these jobs, right? Because right now for these gig economy workers, they have to go through hell to claim unemployment. Um, I remember going through that. So I drove for Lyft part-time um, and it kind of supplemented some income when I was off the road. Uh, and, you know, I was not able to do that when Pennsylvania changed its rules about the date of your car. So my car was outside of that date and I wouldn't be able to, to drive for Lyft. And I, you know, tried to get unemployment and it took like over two months to go through all of that. Like I had to provide so much information for them. Um, and they had to get in touch with Lyft and t it, like, it was just a whole big mess just for me to get pittance, right? Just for me to get like pittance for three months to get by, to get to the next, next, you know, round so that I could have food on the table and be able to pay my fucking rent, um, you know, at a, at a really difficult juncture in my life. Now, firing the leader of the strikes, like I'm, I'm, it's good to see that Instacart is at least willing to, to negotiate at the table, like willing to be like, okay, we recognize some of your demands and here's how we are going to meet them. They still didn't meet the $5 increase, right? Uh, $5 minimum increase. Um, they, they still didn't meet that. They're like, well, we're giving you sanitizer. And oh, yeah, well, is that nice? That's, you know, so, but Amazon's not doing that. Amazon's not doing that. They, they're basically trying to use um, financial dread as a means of stopping the strikes, right? They want that to be, they want that to, to destroy the morale of the strikers to say that you won't be able to afford food, you won't be able to pay your rent, and we will make that happen. Like it's a threat is really what they're doing. They're threatening people that are a asking for basic human rights, that are asking for um things that are very reasonable they're not like asking like I, I mentioned that yesterday these are all reasonable requests to be made these are all requests that have been reasonable for the last two decades when people have been asking for them you know so um that's what this is this is this is this is an exploitative act 
uh, once again, to care more about their profits um, than about people, than about health, than about safety, than about the general, uh, general humanity, um, you know, the, about their customers. They don't care about their customers either. I wouldn't be surprised if, if, uh, if, they, if they threatened the Whole Foods strikers next. I would not be surprised if the Whole Foods strikers um, are threatened next. So I would, I would keep an eye out for that. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please like and share. And make sure that you are subscribed to uh, get alerts whenever I'm dropping new videos. I'm putting out videos uh, pretty much every single day. Uh, during the the old the old pandemic situation that, that we're all that we're all in together uh, so make sure that you guys are um, you know like share subscribe make sure that you guys are getting notifications um, and uh, and and keep up to date with all this stuff um, what else did I, I don't have any live stand-up comedy dates to let you guys know about I normally would but right now uh, they are all on hiatus so um, the best way to to help is with the with the sharing and making sure that you're subscribed and stuff. But uh, if you have the means to and you can donate, uh, you can donate over at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can make a one-time donation or you can become a sustaining member, uh, whatever you are able to do. But it is, it is absolutely uh, not mandatory. It is a uh, extra sense of appreciation uh, for all the content that will be coming out. All of my content will be available uh, for free for you guys to view and enjoy. Uh, make sure you guys are taking care of each other. Make sure you're being good to each other. And uh, till the next one, we'll see you on the road. Thanks, guys.